we're now going to find the zeros of a function. And remember that the zeros of a function are if we have a function, the zeros are found by setting it equal to zero and solving for x. And so we're going to be talking about this topic a lot in the very, very, very near future. But for now, we're only going to talk about factorable functions, ones that you can factor right now. And so for our first example, we're going to start with f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 6. And so I want to make another point. Our lead term is important here, but the big thing is with a degree 3, this means we can find at most three zeros. There are three zeros out there. They may be repeats. They may not be real, but there are three zeros out there that we would like to try and find. So, in this case, we have one, two, three, four terms, so we're going to split them in half, and we're going to look at those terms separately. 2x cubed minus 3x squared has an x squared in common, which leaves a 2x minus 3, and 4x minus 6 has a 2 in common, we have a 2x minus 3. Notice we have a 2x minus 3 here. So 2x minus 3 times x squared plus 2 equals 0. Well, this means that 2x minus 3 equals 0, and it also means that x squared plus 2 equals 0. Well, this one becomes real easy. Add 3 to both sides so that 2x equals 3, divide by 2, and x equals 3 halves. On the right side, when we subtract 2, we get x squared equals a negative 2, and we're going to stop here for now because this is not real. This is not a real 0. Instead, it will be a complex 0 with complex parts, and so we're going to just say, hey, we're done with this problem. It doesn't do anything else for us. We just have the one real 0 and it looks like we have two complex zeros still out there. Well, the next example that we want to look at, let's look at something that has a few more factors. Let's say we have x minus 3 times 2x plus 5 times x plus 4. Well, here, when we're told to find the zeros, that just means we replace this with a zero. Notice it's already factored. That's actually really good news, because now we just solve each of them separately. And that tells me x is 3, 2x is minus 5, getting a little ahead of myself, divide by 2, x is minus 5 halves, and when we subtract 4 from both sides, x is minus 4. So I have 1, 2, 3 answers, and I had 1, 2, 3x's total. So I found as many as I was looking for, 1 per factor, and my answer is the set of all numbers 3, minus 5 halves, and minus 4. So that's how we find the zeros when it's something that we can factor.